This is part two of the how to set up a gambling simulation on an Excel spreadsheet. In part one, I showed how to um, create this simulation where um, this blue line represents your bankroll playing a simple coin flip game. And this red line shows the results of gambling on a lucky number at uh, roulette. Each time you hit your lucky number, you win $35. But each time you lose, which is most of the time, you just gradually uh, shrink your bankroll. Now, this is a particularly lucky streak because on average, you get hit your lucky number 10 times in 400 trials, as we have here. If I press F9 key, um, here's a more typical result, about 10 times. You end up losing because... Um, you lose on average 5% playing roulette, so you're going to lose a lot more often than you win. But here, you know, you do win sometimes. After 400 trials, you're ahead here. Okay. Now, as I said in the last video, the next step would be demonstrate a martingale progression. What's that? That's where you increase your bet after each loss, so that by the time you have your next win, you won back everything you lost plus one dollar. Let me show that. Okay, here's here's the. Let's go back from the betting on a lucky number to betting on red or even or odd or one of those kind of numbers. The probability of winning that one of those is 18 38s, for example. There, 18 red out of total of 38 slots in a, in a roulette wheel. When you win. You win one dollar. When you lose, you lose one dollar. Press enter. I've changed the formula for this cell. I need to copy that for all the remaining cells. Um, from two through four oh three. Okay. And now you can see I'll press F nine a few times. Um that your results are more even now since you're just playing a one-to-one -one game. And roulette is a little bit worse than the fair coin flip game. Now let's see what happens when we do a martingale progression. Um, now here we said the bankroll is simply your previous bankroll plus your win or loss. I'll make a new column that shows your bet, which is different from whether you win or lose. So I'll say bet. The first time you bet, you'll bet 1. So I'll enter a 1 there. Equals 1. And the next time you bet, you're going to look and see whether you won or lost last time. Here. So I'll say, if you lost, say equal. If you lose. So you lost if this kitty corner cell has a minus 1. So if the kitty corner cell equals minus one, you lost. You want to bet double your bet from the previous previous bet. So I'll put two times your previous bet, which is the cell right above. Otherwise, if you won, you just bet one. Right parentheses. Okay? Okay, then you've got two sequential losses, a loss and a loss. So you double your bet this time, and if you win, you win back what you lost plus one. And that'll be true for any long sequence. Let me first copy this formula all the way down to the 400, 403 spot. And then I have to do this, I have to change this one as well, because we're still just um, adding this winner win or loss. We want to add this one over here. We want to win or lose the bet. So we'll change this form. It's, it's no longer F2 plus G2. It's F2 plus H2, right? I think it's changed the G to an H. Okay. No, I goofed. I missed the G backspace. Okay, here we go. Okay. F2 plus H2. We're adding this number, not this number. 
this still got the old formula. I need to copy this new formula all the way down to the 403 level. Okay. Is it working correctly? Um, it didn't work right. This formula has a mistake. Here's the mistake. I just added the bet without without subtracting for, for losses. The new bankroll is your previous bankroll plus your bet multiplied by the previous result. So I have to do this times your previous result, win or lose. Okay, now is it working properly? Let me copy this to the first 10 or so. Let's see if it's working properly. Okay, you lose, you bet one, it becomes 400. You lose, so you double your bet to two. You lose again, you subtract two. You lose again, you subtract four. You lose again. Oh no, you win. Eight, and you and now you have five one. Okay, it's working the way it's supposed to. Whenever you after each sequence of losses, the win cancels all your losses plus adds one. Okay. We need to copy this correct formula um, all the way down. So I select it, drag all the way down to 403. Ah, there's the result we want. Okay, you can see what happens. Each sequence of losses causes a little dip and then your win at the end of the sequence makes up for all those losses and you're still ahead by one after the sequence of losses. So you just build up your uh, bankroll one by one. Now you have these long streaks of losses, which are very um, scary, right? But you still win. You won from 500 to 700. Let's try to tr press F9 a few more times and see what happens. Oh, well, there's a loss, a heavy loss. Did it even go, did it go below zero? If it went below zero, your bankroll is wiped out. Let's um, let's change the scale here F from zero to a thousand. Okay, you didn't get wiped out. You had a scary loss, but um, you didn't get wiped out. It looks like a 256 loss. Still made two hundred dollars in this four four hundred. 400 bet sequence. Let's try it a few more times. Oh, another lucky sequence. Ah, here we go. Here, your bankroll, your $500 bankroll gets wiped out. And you've got zero and you can't really continue. Let's try it a few more times. There's a lucky streak. Mmm, here's another zero out. So, we can modify this to change the behavior. Let's say that when you've had a losing bet of 256, you stop and restart your, your sequence with a bet of one, even though you haven't recovered your loss. We'll, we'll limit, in other words, we'll limit the bets to no more than, uh, no more than 256. So I'll say, I'll, I'll make a new col column called limited bet. And what this formula will say is, if the bet is over 256, you set it back to one. So let me do that. Equals if left parentheses, the cell to the left, which is this one, H2 is greater than 256, set this value to one. Otherwise, set it to the same value. Okay, let's copy this over. Let's temporarily set this to uh, 10. So if the bet is greater than 10, 
uh, it'll go back to one uh, here. Okay, and I'll let me press F9 a few times so we can get something greater. Okay, here we go. Here's a sequence that became greater than 10. It would set it back to one. So it's working the way we expect. So we'll make this back to 256. Okay, and then I'll copy that all the way down. Well, I won't copy it all the way down yet because we need to change this also. This new bankroll is your old bankroll. Um, F2 plus H2 times G2. Now we, instead of H, we want an I2 instead of H. So I'll change the H to an I. Okay. So we still have the old formula here. Here's the new formula. I instead of H. I'll shift click here and select all four and I'll copy all four of these um, row, uh, columns downward to um, 400. Okay, here we see a new result here. It looks like 256 was lost and the bet was reset to one. So after after a big loss, you have to restart your, your sequence. Let's see how, how this goes if I press F9 for a new 400-bit sequence. Now here's a good example of um, what can happen. The, the losing streak happened right at the beginning. So you may think, oh, I'm never going to run. I'm never going to do the Martingale for, you know, 100 or 200. I'm just going to earn $10. Uh, with a martingale. I'll just do the sequence 10 times. Is it the chance of hitting, of, of having a long losing streak in, in 10, 10 sequences? So small. Well, here's what happens. It could happen right at the beginning. You can lose all your money right, right from the very start. This disproves the fallacy of, of using the martingale to, to earn money in the long run. Okay, F9. Oh, there are two losing, you know, that you've gone bankrupt twice. So you can see this is not a good way to earn money. I mean, it works sometimes, but sooner or later, sometimes sooner, sometimes later, the system will fail and you'll have a big loss.